Hi, so I'm Kyle Decker. Um, I feel a little bit uncreative now because I'm going to be the second person talking about a psychiatry in, uh, internship at Carver College at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, which I did this year uh, during fifth and sixth block. <clears throat> now before I talk about what I uh, did, I want to talk a little bit about, about the therapy I worked on. Because all of my work concerned um, a new therapy called acceptance and commitment therapy which has been on the rise in the past 10, 20 years, depending on who you've talked to about it. It's based off what is known as cognitive behavioral theory, which even if you don't know that, uh, the ther uh, therapy by name, you'll know it by practice. Basically what cognitive behavioral therapy states is it it's disproving inaccurate thoughts. So let's say you know, someone has been having weight problems and is thinking, you know, I'm fat, I'm overweight. Um, and that person is, in reality, say, extremely thin, the point of cognitive behavioral theory is looking at them, showing facts, statistics, basically proving to them in any way they can that what they're thinking is just ridiculous. Acceptance and commitment therapy disagrees with that uh, idea. They, they go with, uh, acceptance and commitment therapy goes off the idea that if someone tells you not to think about elephants, you're going to think about elephants. It accepts that these ideas and these concepts just won't go away. So what it tries to go, do instead is it preaches, well, acceptance of these ideas and commitment to what you want to do in regardless of these anxieties, of these worries, of these uncomfortable feelings and thoughts. So the research I worked on was with uh, Dr. Lillian Dindo um, at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. And what she focuses on is intensive one-day group therapies um, on comorbid issues. So for example, she did a pilot study uh, on acceptance and commitment therapy for depression and migraines, and she also did another one on depression and vascular disease, which if you remember from Kath uh, Catherine's presentation, they've already actually studied with bipolar disorder and uh, vascular disease. So vascular disease does work in very much with these uh, much more mentally thought out processes. Um, and the reason she did a one-day group therapy is because it's, it's been shown in the past that one day is usually the t uh, therapy length most people go in. They don't do much more than that. So trying to get as much as you can and the biggest impact you can in one day is, can pay extreme dividends if it works. And she actually did a pilot study on depression and migraines and that one showed statistically significant results, which is why we've been plugging away at the rest of these. I also worked a little, did a little bit of work with her husband, uh, Dr. Chatty Kalarje, um, which all you need to know is I did some work with him. I'll talk more about that later. So I did a lot of things. I was over two blocks. A lot of it was uh, a much more, I guess, random uh, it's stuff. It's, it's hard to describe. I didn't have one thing that I did from day one to the final day I was there, but I did do three very major projects. The first one is I worked on a consort diagram, and basically what a consort diagram is, is you figure out the general process for t participants. So you figure out how many people did their original screening, figure out who didn't make that original screening, how many people didn't pass that, and the reasons they didn't pass that. So then you have these list of people who made it through screening one. Then you figure out who, how many people made it through screening two and why they might not have made it through that and so on and so on and so on. So not only does this involve having to understand the exact way the experiment is set up you also have, and the exact way a participant will go through it, you have to basically, f you see how many participants you'll lose because you'll start with thousands of possible participants and end up with, I think, for one of the experiments, we ended up with somewhere around 50. I also did a literature search which I'm just going to very, very bluntly state is not fun. <laughs> um, a literature search, basically what it is, is if you, do, if you take classes here, they'll ask, you know, do, do a, a, a review of some research on a topic, and you know, maybe five articles. A literature review search is basically that, but to the extreme. You take a topic, you search a couple of databases, and you find every single article that could possibly go on that topic. I found somewhere around 30 articles concerning ACT in medical populations, so for example, ACT with a vascular disease, and it took me about a week to get through it all. Um, and then finally, I, for the Collage lab, which works more, um, which actually has participant visits, uh, Dindo's lab didn't have visits while I was there, I was able to visit participants, um, I didn't actually talk to them, but I sat in on, uh, they were about three hours long each, and with those, the thing I learned best was just how little I know which might seem kind of counterintuitive, but it was just impressive to see how much these people could pick up um, off of seemingly 
minute things that I couldn't even notice. How they figured out how to ask the perfect question to get the right answer, even if, the, if they ask the participant straight out like, are you depressed? Or do you have anxiety? The participant might say no, but they were able to find ways to get that information regardless. That was the thing that more than anything else taught me basically why culture nowadays is so fascinated with Sherlock Holmes because I don't know how people can pick up on those small pieces of data and make such a coherent story out of it. So a lot of people talked about what they learned on a whole basis, but what I learned most was about myself, um, which is what I came in wanting to learn about it. So I came into this uh, internship, number one, I did learn that I enjoy a more lively work environment. Uh, the Collage Lab was much more hectic and there were people bouncing all over the place and I know that some people couldn't deal with that but I relished every moment I spent in that lab because it just, it motivated me and pushed me to work harder. In addition, I, um, I went into this thinking I might want to do uh, neuroscience. But I wasn't sure it was something with medicine and psychology and I was really kind of freaking out because I had no idea what I wanted to do. But there was that back of my mind that's like, I'm going to do neuroscience. That kind of changed after this. And I'm not saying that uh, I'm like, now I want to do clinical psychology. In fact, it's very different. I probably know coming out of this even less of what I want to do specifically than I went going into this. But the important thing that this internship opportunity proved to me is that that's all right. It showed to me that with the majors I'm pursuing, just how many things I can branch off off of that. And in fact, with the graduate studies I pursue, how many diversity of careers and diversity of opportunities I can go under and how I can, I can change my path at any time in which I choose. So it, it helped motivate me to, regardless of whether it's maybe a little bit different than it was today and might be a little bit different tomorrow, to just pursue what I'm passionate about because one way or another I can work myself into a career. But finally, by far, the most important thing I learned is that I'm not going to be able to work without dual monitors because it is <laughs> crippling, crippling to spend two months working with dual monitors and then having to go back to the single monitor. <laughs> so finally, I just want to uh, thank a few people. Obviously, I want to thank um, the, my donor. I didn't have a specific donor, but mine was named in uh, honor of Reverend Henry W. Taylor. I want to thank my site supervisor. She was very good at adjusting to the things I needed. I would like to uh, thank Sue Astley, my faculty response, uh, sponsor. And then finally, the list of people there is uh, Collage, who was generous enough to take me into his lab. He's uh, Dindo's husband. And then uh, Sean, Megan, and Anna were all the other uh, RAs that worked there, and they made that experience fantastic for me. So thank you. <laughs>